Hi, I'm Ned Saltz, and I want to welcome you to a little preview that I'm going to be doing for you right now of a webinar I'm conducting on Thursday, June the 24th, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Boris Continuum Complete 7 for FX Plug. Now, Boris FX has already released Boris Continuum Complete for After Effects. Now we're seeing the release of BCC7 for FX Plug, and I've got to tell you, BCC has always been my favorite set of filters, and with, with version 7, uh, Boris has just gone above and beyond everything, improving features that already were in the product, think, making things a lot faster, streamlining workflows, and adding a few little twists as well that we'll actually talk about on the 24th. So all I'm going to do right now is just show you one feature of Continuum Complete 7 for FX Plug, which has a few differences uh, between the version that we found in BCC6 and the version in BCC7. So I'm just going to move right over here into Final Cut Pro right now, where I've already loaded some footage and already named some sequences, and we'll see the rationale for that in just a moment. But I'm going to start with a DV a bit of footage right here. Um, and let's actually get this to fit to window. Okay, but this is a DV footage right here. I absolutely promise you that. We'll take a look at this in item properties right here, and you'll see format. We've got uh, 2997, 720 by 480 DV, 3.6 uh, megabytes per se megabits per second. Typical DV footage like so many of us have, but right now it's an HD world, so we really need to be dealing with HD footage. How do we get this up to HD? And one of the ways we're going to be able to do this is going to be through the BCC7 up-res filter. There are two ways of doing this. Uh, there's the easy way and there's the more convoluted way. I'm going to show you the easy way right now. And then when we have our webinar on the 24th, then I'll show you an alternative way of handling it. But let's just do it the easy way right now. So what I'm first going to do is start here with a sequence, sequence that I'm just calling up-res. And the way I'm going to handle this is I'm going to create a slug. So we'll go down here and create a slug, and I see right here that my DV sequence is roughly, DV clip is roughly 12 seconds and 3 frames. So I'll just create a slug of, in the length of 13 seconds right here, and I'll go ahead and drop this into my timeline right here. And here we go, and you can take a look right here and see that I have a 1920 by 1080 timeline, so I'm going to up-res a 720 by 480 image to a 1920 by 1080. And here I've got my slug, so I'm going to double-click this to load this now into the viewer. And again, fit to window. I don't know why it doesn't want to do that. And let's go over here to my effects tab, video filters, BCC7 distortions and perspective is where this is going to be found. And we've got the BCC up-res filter right here. We'll move over here to filters, and here we have our interface for this. And the first thing you'll see is I have a choice between working with a well layer or a nested sequence workflow. I'm going to work with the well layer because that's really the preferred way of handling this and actually the simpler way. So this is the footage we're going to be up -resing. We're going to just drag this right here into the well and into the source layer, and there we are. Now you see our aspect ratios aren't exactly the way we want it, so we're going to have to do a little transformation right Right here, and I'm going to transform that to fill to frame crop. And there we are, right here at the full frame. Next, I want to twirl down my quality. And we have various methods for this up-res, uh, from draft all the way to something that Boris calls Magic Sharp. And we all happen to like Magic Sharp a lot, those of us that have tested it, as well as Boris's uh, recommendation. So we'll go with that, and we'll go with the Magic Sharp, and we have varying levels of sharpness right here. Here I'm going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. Move over to here, and you see here I've got the full frame right here, and I'm going to raise this to say 25 right now to start. Do we see any difference? Let's raise it all the way to something like 90 and see if we see any difference right here. And again, I can see in here a little sharpening, maybe too much sharpening. So let's bring it down to 50 and see what we've got. Well, let's take it down to 25. 25 is what the documentation recommends for you anyway. All we then need to do 
is render this out and we're going to have a sequence that's been up to a beautiful HD sequence with virtually no loss whatsoever and in fact there's a lot of gain that is added to this. Uh, this is really pretty remarkable because we're starting with footage shot in a DV camera on location in a school in Africa and uh, typical footage. Now we're trying to add all of those pixels and BCC7 is doing this absolutely beautifully, flawlessly and it renders quickly. I'll tell you right now I'm working on a 2008 version 8 core Mac Pro with 16 gigs of RAM and the render time for this 13 second clip is about three and a half to four minutes which I think is very fast considering all of the uh, competition. It's a wonderful filter and we're going to look at a lot more of the features of Boris Continuum Complete 7 for FX Plug when you join me for the BCC7 FX Plug web webinar on Thursday June the 24th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. See you then.